I'll be honest and say that I don't really spend a lot of time moving between music players. For the most part, I'm pretty set in my ways in terms of where I get my music. On my computer, I use MPD in order to serve my music. On my phone, I have Spotify. And honestly, I've canceled Spotify and re-signed up to Spotify so many times they're probably pretty sick of it. I really do want to use like my own music that I own on my phone, but... <sighs> I don't know. It's weird. I can't seem to find a good music player that's on there. All of them have little things that piss me off. So the phone is a complete mess in terms of music, and it keeps making me run back to Spotify. But on my computer, MPD seems to serve my purposes because I have, like, I don't know, 100 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes or something of my own music that I've, that I've procured over the last 10, 15 years, and it serves me fine. But this morning on Twitter, I actually saw someone tweet about a cool little GUI application called Nuclear. And Nuclear is a way to stream music from various different sources completely free. Now, I should caution you, some of these things aren't what you would say the most ethical ways of doing it. Now, it doesn't actually pull anything from, like, BitTorrent or anything like that. I'm talking about specifically it pulls things from YouTube and that's probably not the greatest way because you're bypassing all of YouTube's advertising and stuff like that, but nah, I don't care. Um, <laughs> but it also pulls from different sources like SoundCloud and uh, quite a few others and I'll show you the source list here in a moment. And I, I've been playing around with it for a little while today and I actually found that it's really quite good. Now it has a few quirks that I'll talk about as well, but for the most part, it's actually pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at Nuclear right now. Right now. Let's go do it. So this is what Nuclear looks like. Now, I can't tell you what this is coded in. It's very possible that this is an Electron app. I don't actually know. I will say that it is fairly good looking, but it's not customizable in terms of look. As far as I know, there's only this dark thing. I couldn't see a place where you could actually go through and change it to a light theme, but I might be wrong about that. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't see a, a dark theme or a white theme, a light theme. So basically what this looks like is what it looks like. And, but you know, whatever, it looks fine. I also have noticed that it has some weird taste in music in terms of what it d does in terms of best new music, but I'm... You know, I'm in my mid-30s, so I'm past the point where I find new music entertaining. So, if it wasn't built in the 90s, don't talk to me. I I don't know. Uh, <laughs> really, I mean, that's not even true, because I, I like music in the two, from the 2000s as well. It's just the more newish stuff from the 2010s that I'm not really into. But that's, you know, beside the point. So... From the little bit of I've played with it, it actually does a pretty good job of finding and playing pretty much any artist you want. And it gets those things from YouTube by default. So the default music source is from the YouTube, and this stuff's all in installed by default. But you can also change to Audius, Bandcamp, NVIDIAS, I don't know what those are, SoundCloud, uh, Jamendo, and then there's an iTunes podcast plugin, so you could search for podcasts on here as well. That's really cool. Um, and also allows you to find uh, metadata for like uh, the album art and the song data and stuff like that to be paired with the things that you search for. So, And the same thing for lyrics. So it, because it searches from a whole bunch of different places, you'll be able to find the music that you really, really like. I... I wish that it would allow you to search from all these places all at once instead of having to go through and come here to the plugin section, change the default music source, and then do your search over again. It would be cool if it would search kind of all of them all at once, but it, as far as I know, it can't do that. But let's just say I wanted to search for, I don't know, Ed Sheeran. We can. I first got to spell it right. And then it will actually come up with you know, his artist page and stuff like that, and you can go through and see some popular tracks and then all of his albums. Now, 
Here's one of my problems with nuclear is that it treats all of his singles as well. And, and this does it for every artist. It treats all of the singles as individual ar albums. So if you actually want to find albums, you actually have to go through and find the, you know, the actual album. So it's, it's really hard because a lot of the singles also have the same album cover. So in this case, the album is called Divide. And that's where you'll find all of the songs, right? And that makes it a lot harder to browse than if it was actually, you know, here are the albums. And I'm, I'm not sure why it is unable to actually sort these things by true albums. Because when you go to YouTube and their artist pages and stuff like that, you can see the playlists based on album. So it should be able to get those things fairly easily. I'm not sure why it doesn't. Now, it will also allow you to search for other bands and stuff like that. So we'll just search for Breaking Benjamin, if I can spell it right. Yeah. And just similar to the, to the other one, you can see that it kind of lists all of the singles here as well. So that's probably my biggest problem with nuclear is that it's kind of hard to think, but there are some good things too. So if you were to say, let's say you, I'm, I'm going to uh, mute this so that I don't get pulled off from YouTube, but let's just say I play my favorite song, which is this, and I hit play now. It adds it to the queue over here, and then it plays. Now, first thing you know, you'll notice is that it is a little bit slow. It's not the fastest in terms of loading things, but once it starts playing, it usually just plays. And you, you can't hear it playing because, like I said, I have it muted, but it does play really well. I'm not sure in terms of quality and stuff like that. It doesn't... I'm not an audiophile, so I can't tell you whether or not it's like high quality or whatever. It sounds fine to me. But another cool thing that it will do is it will go through and actually, if you just play one song, it, there's this little button down here at the bottom called Auto Radio, and that will just keep playing things, you know, indefinitely, you know, as long as you have the play button, you know, pressed. And that's really cool. And it doesn't just play from the artist, it kind of creates you your own kind of radio, kind of like Pandora. It's really neat. Uh, the, earlier, I, I started out with an Ed Sheeran song, and then it played, um, I don't even remember who it was. Oh, it was Shawn Mendes. It, they, they played a Shawn Mendes song, and then they played a, uh, I think it was a Coldplay song after that. It was, you know, really cool. I don't know necessarily that it was always going to play, you know, related genres or whatever, but it, it seemed to do fairly well and that's honestly really cool it kind of reminds you of the autoplay feature on youtube where you press one song and it just kind of plays over you know forever until you you know go you know turn it off and actually it kind of does better than youtube because a lot of times when you do this on youtube it'll play the same artist you know throughout the whole play it, whereas this it seems to play other artists which is more pandora like and it's kind of cool um, you can download these songs, you can download them to playlists, you can add songs to your favorite albums, favorite tracks, favorite artists, and it also allow you to add your local music from like a music file and whatever. That's really, really cool. Um, so you could use this nuclear as your just main music player. Yeah, so you'd have streaming and your local files all in one place. It's really neat. Now, it doesn't do a good job in terms of allowing you to use buttons on your keyboard to control the media controls. I couldn't get those to work. I'm not sure if that has to do with me being in DWM or on, or on Window Manager or not. I couldn't get them to work. It also doesn't respect the back and forward buttons on my mouse. So you actually, I actually have to go up here with the mouse and hit the back button. That's kind of annoying. I can't just use the back and forward buttons, which I really want to do. Overall, it's a really nice little application for you to be able to stream music. Now, in terms of settings, there's not a lot here. It will scrabble to last FM if you wanted to. It will also allow you to import your last FM favorites, which is pretty kind of cool. It has a Mastodon uh, URL thing. I'm not exactly sure what that does. I'm not going to try it. I don't want it to go through and like toot out every single song I play, if that's what it plans on doing. Uh, that seems unnecessary to me. Um, it allows you to control some settings for playback, like, like loop and shuffle songs and stuff like that. Why you can't, why these things here? So play a random track when shuffle is active and the previous track button is clicked. So 
I'm not exactly sure what the setting would do because you have a setting or a shuffle and a a loop button down here. The audio radio by default. Maybe this is just for setting defaults. I don't know. The number of seconds to seek forward, backwards, and pressing the arrow keys. That's cool. Um, so there are some key key bindings, but they don't look like they're able to be remapped. Um, the program settings, notification timeout, d disable hardware rendering might fix issues with dragging elements and flashing a screen. I haven't had any of the problems. Uh, frameless window, I think th that would actually give you like a, a bar up at the top, but I'm not sure. And then you have some language settings, but that's pretty much all. Now, it would be really cool if they were able to institute like Spotify, because I use Spotify and Spotify does have an API because there's there are programs and third-party clients like NC Spot that use Spotify's API. It'd be really cool if Spotify was, in, you know, implemented within this program because it would be really a true one-stop shop for all of your, you know, music listening needs. If you couldn't find it on YouTube, you could find it on Spotify or whatever, you know, and, and that'd be just kind of really awesome. And it'd be really cool if you could go through and search through multiple services just to find the one you want. Now, I could understand how that could get messy. So they'd have to do a much better job in terms of actually organizing those artist pages so that there weren't such a mess. Because even with just one source right now, those things are a mess. But this is a fairly new program, I believe. I don't think it's been around for all that long, but I'm really excited to see where it goes because it's actually really, really good. Now, the question is, am I going to continue to use it? Because like I said at the beginning, I'm very uh, weird in terms of how I listen to my music. I listen to Spotify on the phone and I got MPD on my computer. I'm very happy with that. I don't know whether or not nuclear will get me away from that or not. I like the ability to have some streaming stuff on my computer, but if I were going to be focused on streaming, I'd just install NC Spot or I would just use YouTube through a browser. I'm not entirely sure I care enough about nuclear in order to make a switch. It's iffy. And I'm going to play around for, with it for a little while. We'll see if it works into my workflow or not. We'll see. Like I said. So in the comments below, let me know if you're interested in using an app like Nuclear and if, or if you've tried it out, what your experience is. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast where I have a couple of new tiers there as well. So you can definitely check those out if you're interested. You can hit the join button down there below on in here on YouTube. Uh, before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast, Chris, Mitchell, Merrick, Camp. Chris has re-upped to executive producer. He just keeps climbing. Thank you, Chris. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.